I've showcased the dashboard a few times where I'm talking about different forms of self-service. One of my favorite examples is a dashboard where you can come in, click an add button, and allow users to choose which metrics they want to see right on the screen. They don't have to be technical, these metrics are pre-built for them, but it still allows them to put together their own dashboard and customize it a bit. Today I'm going to show you how to build such a dashboard from the ground up. This is just going to be like riding an elevator for the first time, an uplifting experience. Oh, and I'm Jeff, and this is Off the Charts with Jeff. And before I start building this, let me just give you a quick summary of what we're doing. We're adding these container controls to the screen. So a lot of the work that I'm going to be doing is setting up and styling these controls. But the gist of it is we have a container, the container is able to display which dashboards we want to see, and we're simply programmatically setting that container. Now what we're going to have is a pop-up so that the user can choose which dashboard they want to select, and as they make a selection, it's going to feed into the correct container control. So there's a couple scripts that are going to go on here that will manage the IDs, and that's all that's needed. Jumping right in, I'm in the Dundas BI designer, and I'm going to build a data cube. So you can see that I've already gone ahead and built a data input. The purpose behind this is so that we can get a list of all the dashboards we want to navigate to, so we can get them very quickly. Now you see I've already created a template. This concept completely revolves around the container control. If I drop the container control on the screen, you can see that it has a view ID. Whatever ID you set that to, that's the dashboard that's going to be displayed. Let's drop some frames onto the dashboard and do some styling. So let's just size these appropriately. I'm also going to remove the titles from these controls because we're going to be replacing it later. And one of my favorite tools that I like to use is this extension that I've already got. It's called Colorzilla. It's a Chrome extension. And it allows you to point to something on the screen and actually read the color directly. It's just a really nice little tool for me to pull out of these images the colors that are being used so that I know that what I use is going to look good. Now let's go ahead and add a button control to the top right hand corner. This is going to be our plus button. So we replace the text and I'll just make this quite a bit bigger. I'm also going to turn off some of the mouse over states because I don't want this to suddenly become blue as I'm clicking on it or mousing over it. So by disabling that and the background color, I have a nice little plus button that I can hit at any point to fire our interaction. Let's just make a copy and do the same thing below. And then from there, let's go and add a data label control. The data label is going to be used so that we can display the actual name of the dashboard that we're seeing. When we built that data input cube before, we had both an ID and a name. So I'm going to add the display name that we want to show as the default. So by building this metric set, I want to see both the ID and the name in here. Let's just drag those fields in. So there's our dashboard name. And then I'm going to add to this the ID as well. Both of these need to have the ID just so I can easily filter on it. You'll see when we get there. Now that we've got these, let's build another layer. So I'm going to create a new layer which is going to do the pop-up. So as I click on this, it's going to pop up a new screen on top of all of our content to allow the user to choose what they want to see. So I'm simply going to draw a rectangle over our whole area and change the opacity so that we can slightly see through it. So it looks like everything's being blocked. One trick that you can do uh, for the center content is to use a frame. The frame control actually has more properties than the rectangle. So by removing the title really quickly, I can go into these properties and actually add a nice little drop shadow so that it looks like the frame is popping up off the screen. It would be a nice way for us to show our content that we want to see. Let's drag that content in from the data cube that we created. So here are the dashboard lists. The other thing we want to add is the ID so that we know what we clicked on. But we don't want to show the ID. The user doesn't care. We just need to know it behind the scenes. So I change the visualization so the ID isn't displayed. So just flatten this table and make it extend out a bit so that it fills our area. And that's good enough. You could certainly style this more. Now let's go and add a script to the click event here. 
This script is basically going to drive the entire interaction. So what this script is doing is two parts. It's going to figure out what you clicked on and then find the ID of that dashboard. Then it's going to set a parameter. So it's going to set the associated parameter to decide what we're going to display. I don't yet have those parameters on the screen, but the script's ready to go. Let's hide this layer for a moment. Then let's go ahead and add the interaction that's going to drive which content we want to see. Uh, by changing these, it's telling me which one is selected. The reason I'm doing this is because I need to know which plus button you hit so that I know which area and which dashboard to set. Now let's go ahead and add filters to these data labels. These filters are going to display the name correctly based on the ID that's coming from what the user clicked on. So if I click on a dashboard from that other screen we just created, it grabs the ID from the names that are being displayed sets the ID's filter so that the text being displayed on each one of these filter controls is going to be correct. The data label itself is the one that's actually going to drive what's being displayed in the dashboard. So as we change the parameter, it's going to cascade. So think of it this way. We click on the data table. It's setting a parameter, one of these two. When the parameter changes, it displays the name. When the name changes, it's going to kick off another event, and that event is going to actually go and change which one of these dashboards we're going to display. So here's the code for that. And I would put this code into each one and make sure it targets the correct container control. So if we go now and we change these filters, I'm going to default them to empty. But now if I go in and change these on the fly, you can see that in changing them, it's going to change the dashboard that we're going to display. So remember that these filters get pushed in by that data table we show on the pop-up screen. The user wouldn't change these, it's just a good way of testing it. One last thing, on the ready interaction, I'm going to force the loading of these controls. This is being done for, in the case of bookmarking. By the way, you may be thinking that there's a couple extra steps here that maybe don't make sense, like why am I saving the parameter, why am I not just changing the container control itself? The reason we're doing all of this is because we want to be able to bookmark it. Now we can get those parameter controls off of the screen, and if we hit view, you can see we're able to come in, pop up, see which dashboard we want to select, and depending on which plus button we hit, it's going to fill in the correct area. So that's it. Now let's create a quick bookmark to make sure that everything's correct. So by creating a bookmark, there's the URL that was generated. You'll notice that it automatically populates what I selected. So it works perfectly. This gives the users the control so that they can decide what they want to see. Anybody who comes in here and doesn't have a bookmark preset up gets a blank dashboard and they can be ready to go, ready to use that self-service. Now, if you like this concept and you want to learn more about self-service in general, take a look at our video on self-service and silver service. Really good video that talks about why you should be doing these kind of things and some of the pitfalls in self-service in the first place. Highly recommend you take a look. I know it's been a lot, hopefully you've been able to follow along, but if you need any of this code, feel free to either reach out to me, ask Jeff at dundas.com with specific questions, and we'll also be attaching this code to the bottom of this video, so you can get it from there as well. Thanks for watching.